Hello, all of my lovely subscribers, all 3,500 of you. I cannot believe that in one month, you guys. You guys are literally the best. Um, thank you so much for all of your support. Happy February. If you're new to the channel, this is not a typical read for me. This is a special read that I'm going to be doing because it is February and I am the Southern Strega. And by Southern, I mean I live in Atlanta, Georgia, which is the epicenter of the Civil War as well as the Civil Rights Movement. And here in America on February 1st starts Black History Month. So with that being said, I am going to um, pay homage and honor and respect to Black History today. And I'm going to be pulling some um, cards from a Root Worker deck that I am going to put a link in the description box that I suggest that you pick up if you are into tarot and um, connect to this type of energy. It's the Hoodoo Tarot, if you can see it right here. It comes with this amazing guidebook, guys, and I never read from guidebooks. I'm an intuitive reader. I just interpret from pictures, but this is the only deck that I am going to read from the guidebook because they have done an amazing job um, making this almost like a historical read. A lot of the people on these cards are actual people who lived and have a story and are, are known. I mean, you can Wikipedia some of these people. Like, It's going to be a history lesson as well as a tarot reading today. Um... I am not a root worker. I do not claim to be. I am a channeler. I channel energy and you can feel the energy um, around this type of mysticism very hard down here in Atlanta. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of suffering. There was also a lot of, you know, coming together as a community and rising from ashes and just a lot of powerful energy down here in the South. Okay. Um, if you're not familiar with hoodoo, it's basically what happened as a byproduct of the transatlantic um, slave ordeal. Um, when Africans were removed from their home, forcibly removed and sold into slavery, they started coming into contact with Europeans and indigenous people in the new colonies in North America. Hoodoo is what happens when all of those different religions kind of sort of mix together. Um, you have probably practiced hoodoo and you don't even know it. If y'all were eating collard greens and cornbread and pork on New Year's Day, then you were engaging in hoodoo. <laughs> all of that originally originated with the slaves and on plantations. And it was all a means of um, their religion, their mysticism, things like that. So to pay respect to that and to, you know, give a nod to that and to educate you guys a little bit on my channel this month, I am going to be using this deck. I'm doing a little different read today. Um, this deck is separated into three separate groups right here. We have the elders. These are all your major arcana card. This is judgment right here. It's called Dem Bones. Like there's different names for everything, guys. And there's, um, it's just a beautiful deck and I can't wait to share it with you. Anyways, I'm gonna pull you some advice from the ancestors. This is like the highest wisdom that you're needing to pay attention to, these major arcana. That's gonna be what's most important going on in your reading. The court cards in this deck, you know, the kings, the queens, the knights, the pages, that's called the family in this deck. So I'm going to pull from the family as well and see what kind of advice um, we can get from them. And then the rest of the cards, the minor arcana, excluding the court cards, are all um, considered the community. So basically, the hierarchy is you should care the most what the elders think, and then your family, and then what everyone else thinks. So they're all important messages, and they're all things that need to be heard, but th there is a hierarchy to them. So I'm going to pull from all three sets of these cards, and I am going to give you the history behind everything, okay? So that is that. If you guys have any questions about any of this or would like to discuss this, I will throw up a post on my community page where we can discuss hoodoo and practices and things like that if you are into talking about stuff like that. Uh, if not, here comes your read for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you've not subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Alrighty, Aquarius, let's get your reading done for you guys. I don't know why I decided to lay my cards out this way and, and read this way. I've never read this way before. I was just called to do that with these cards for some reason because the way that they're made, they're um, split into these three sections. Ooh, that one came out on the floor. Dr. Buzzard, Justice. What's up, Aquarius? You going through some legal troubles? Trying to get justice from something? I'm gonna read you the story about Dr. Buzzard. It's really an interesting one. He was a root worker who was also 
Um, I don't know if he was a licensed practicing lawyer or if he was just um, acting that way. You got the grandchildren. Let me get one more, please, for my Aquarius. I have not seen that grandchildren card pop out yet for me. I want to say that that's the world. Maybe not. I'll have to look that one up. I've literally, I've used this deck so many times and I've never seen that one. That one in the tower had never popped out for me. And I got the tower for, I think it was Virgo. Can I get one more card, please, for Aquarius? There it is. Father Sims. Alrighty, let me go ahead and pull your cards for how your ancestors are viewing you at this time. These are the family cards that came out fast. Daughter of Sticks, that's Page of Wands energy. They're seeing you being really um, passionate, but at the same time, a little bit insecure about something. Um, really going for something that you want big time, but... Um, Maybe going a little too hard without getting all the information you need. You've got nine of sticks energy popping out. That's the nine of wands. Look at her. She's holding a pistol and she's got all these voodoo heads behind her. She is guarded, man. Um, this is the wounded warrior card. I'm going to read about it in this deck, though, and see if it's a little bit different. She's holding a Bible in one hand and a pistol in the other. This is like, I am anointed by the Lord. I am protected. Um, don't come anywhere near me. <laughs> It's like that Ezekiel verse. I think that I think that Ezekiel verse is actually on Dr. Buzzard. I'm almost positive. The one they say in Pulp Fiction that Samuel L. Jackson quotes every time he shoots somebody. Nine of baskets. That's nine of cups energy. Two nines. Getting ready to come out of a big cycle, Aquarius. Oof. Where's your last card? Three of sticks. Yeah, you're coming out of something, but you don't know which way to go is the problem. You know it's time to make a move, but you ain't knowing what to do because you're coming across like a page here in the center. I feel like you're um, not using your best judgment at the moment is what I'm getting. All right, let me give you the stories on these major arcana cards for you guys. All right, the first one y'all pulled was Dr. Buzzard. This is the Justice card. I want you to take a look at him in this picture. He's... um. He's standing there, he's smoking a cigar. He's ashing in the scales of justice. The uh, Lady Justice is holding an African mask in her hand. And I don't know if you can see it. Um, in his hand is the galangal root. Galangal root is, um, is an herb that root workers used to use. You would chew it when you went into court. And if you told lies, you wouldn't be punished for it. Um, this is how Dr. Buzzard helped a lot of his clients get off on their charges and like not be found guilty. And this is the Ezekiel quote I was talking about. It's the one that Samuel L. Jackson says in Pulp Fiction, right before he's about to like execute somebody. It says, and I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall lay my vengeance upon them. This is talking about, um, it's, it's knowing what's right or wrong and knowing that um, whatever you're doing in the 3D here on earth, God sees everything, okay? God sees what you're doing, and God will punish those and reward those, you know, that honor him. And I'm not talking about, if you don't believe in God, that's whatever higher spirit you believe in. I am, like, all-inclusive of all religions here. God, Allah, you know, the spirit, the holy one, whatever you call it, they see all. They know all, okay? They're going to see if you're acting bad. If you're putting on some front like you're doing something um, and acting self-righteous, it's a warning that you will be struck down, all right? If you're seeking justice on something that you know you're in the wrong on, they're warning you right now that you will be struck down. They're also warning you to protect yourself um, and to know that spirit has your back is what I'm saying. If you feel like you're going through some injustice right now, this card is here to tell you that even if you feel like you cannot right that wrong, that the universe is correcting it for you, and it's a reminder of that, okay? And the grandchildren card here, this is actually the star card, Aquarius. This is your own energy. They just call it the grandchildren here because the, the star card is about healing and it's about um, wishes being fulfilled. Grandchildren are like the joy of every parent. You know, every parent to see their kid have a kid, it's like the biggest joy of their life for most of them. 
grandchildren are like a gift. They're a blessing. They're also um, indicative of getting a second chance at life. It's like seeing how you raise your own children and realizing the mistakes that you made and wanting to correct that with your grandchildren. It's, you know, the grandparents like have more wisdom. They've been there, done that, all right? And they want to bestow that onto their grandchildren. I feel like your ancestors are giving you a message right now to don't do what I did. You know, don't do as I do, do as I say. Um, if you went through some kind of childhood trauma, if you were, um, and you're starting to act that out or those, you know, that baggage from the past is coming back to interfere with your energy right now, they're asking you to let that go. Um, they don't, um, it's, it's a card about counting your blessings and realizing what you do have. Um, believing in things doesn't require proof is another thing I'm getting with that. It's talking about how you just need to trust that spirit has this right now. You've got two cards right here wanting me to tell you that spirit has this under control. And that it's already like been decided in the fates and the, in the destiny and the gods and everything. It's already been decided. They've already seen what's happened. They've already seen what happens and they've already passed their judgment, I feel like. But you're getting ready to face whatever that is. I feel like there's something you need to come clean about that you know that um, your energy has been off about where you've been acting out of pocket. Um, something that would not make your grandparents proud is what I'm getting. And I don't mean that you've done something wrong. I mean that you've committed a crime. You could have very literally committed a crime or done something shady. Um, it's more of an energetic thing. It's acting out of character is what I'm getting. They're wanting to remind you of your character and how you were raised and how you treat people and that what is done in the dark will be brought to the light. I'm getting that. What's done in the dark will be brought to the light. So make sure that you are coming correct in the dark. You also pulled Father Sims here. Father Sims is the temperance card. This is um, definitely about tempering your, your emotions, your attitude, your feeling, um, the way that you speak to people, the way that you interact with people. Father Sims was a real person. Um, his name was George Sims. He was born Joe Watson. He was nicknamed the Frizzly Rooster. He was a preacher and a root worker from New Orleans. Um, the rooster nickname, that's a, another hoodoo tradition. People would keep at least one rooster in their backyard to constantly scratch at the ground in case any enemies had placed a root in the backyard. And y'all, the word root can be used um, a lot of ways. There's root workers who are people. You can root somebody, which is like cursing them. Um, you can do root work, which is you know, spiritual healing, things like that. But um, roosters were kept in the backyard to constantly scratch at things. You know, it's, it's, you feel like you've been cursed here is what I'm getting. You feel like you've been dealt this unfair hand. And I don't feel like you've been processing it or handling it with the, the best um, face on. I feel like you've been acting out of character because it does seem like an unfair situation or a situation where you can't win. Um... I'm getting the, with the temperance card though, you just really need to, it's wanting you to ask if you're being fair. If you're, um, you're needing to look at things from the other person's perspective. You're needing to um, work on compromising and realize it's like, it's just like a cut your losses type energy is what I'm getting. Um, cause they do see you coming in this situation immature with this daughters of sticks energy. This is page of wands energy. This is an immature energy. It's a page energy. It's not, and you know, it's not a king. It's not, it's not an emperor or an empress. Um, it can be somebody who's insecure. It can be somebody who procrastinates, who puts something off. You might be putting something off that you need to deal with and you know, you need to deal with it. And it's something that has been eating at you. I feel like for a long time. And it's also preventing you from healing and moving forward and manifesting what you want. I see that you're guarded about this. You don't want to talk about it, man. You like, you're like, do not step to me about this subject. <laughs> you got a Bible in one hand and a gun in the other. This is like the choice. Like, are you going to step up and do what your grandmama taught you, you know, when you were learning the Bible when you were a kid? Or are you going to act, you know, gangster about it <laughs> and, you know, just start fighting? It's like, do you come with love or do you come with hate in this situation? And you don't know which way to go. That's the immaturity of it. It's like you realize that you're in an unfair spot 
and you want to, you know, yell and scream about it. Like that's what the page of wands would do. You'd run off yelling and screaming about it. Like she's charging forward here with her spear in her hand, just ready to go wreck shop. But what I'm seeing here is like this situation seems like it's a blessing in disguise. It's forcing you to get on a new path here with this three of sticks energy. Whatever this event was, this major occurrence, this meeting of a person, um, a situation, a new job or getting fired from a job, whatever happened to you that was a major life event recently forced, forced you to change trajectories is what I'm seeing here. It's, it's telling you to figure out what is important to you, to count your blessings. This nine of cups energy, um, it's about wish fulfillment, but it's also to me about um, Um, it can it can speak to like you feeling like it, things aren't fair, okay? I want you to look at this image. It's an aerial view of nine baskets and they're filled with a few items that represent what most human beings desire the most. There's cash and jewels, which is financial security and wealth in one. There's books in another one that um, provide knowledge. There's a gator head in one that provides protection, a rabbit's foot that provides good luck, old fashioned biscuits, which is nour nourishment and familiarity, home homeliness. There's a bottle of wine, which is like intoxicants. Um, it's asking you to be real careful about um, what you're wishing for in this situation, because I'm getting that justice is going to be served and the higher powers are handling this right now. This is not something that you're gonna get out of or skate away from, I'm seeing. So it's best to just deal with this and take it for what it is and, you know, Basically, take the L and learn something from it. And whatever new path this has put you on is what you're supposed to be on. And I do see it leading to some wish fulfillment in, in your future. I do see it coming out positive. We have Black Herman on the bottom of the deck here. I didn't even see that. I haven't been reading from the bottom of the decks or clarifying. But this is the magician. It's talking about manifesting and, you know, you can make a bad situation worse is what I'm getting here or you can make the best of it. Cause I do see a bad situation. I do see something major that went down that seems very unfair to you. You're feeling very attacked. You're feeling the need to be on guard all the time and you're not knowing how to cope with it. You're being told to just take the L. I'm just getting take that L and move on, keep it moving. Cause it is gonna teach you a major life lesson that I feel like is going to open you up to this. You've got, Two wish fulfillment cards, one at the top and one at the bottom of my reading. You've got the star and the nine of cups. Both of those indicate that this is like dreams coming true and things like that. But I feel like you would never see it or recognize it because the situation seems so messy to you. But it's coming to your life for a reason to push you on a different path. It's meant to take you on a different journey. It, the universe, like It's like you didn't make a choice to do something, so the universe did it for you. You sat around and let this fester too long and didn't deal with it and you put it off and now the universe is, is handing you a healthy dose of it is what I'm getting. All right, Aquas, that's what I got for you guys. Please like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff for me. I love you guys so much. Thank you for helping me out and supporting my channel. I hope you subscribe and stick around. I'll see you next time, Aquas.